STV, your TV. Eno Abrams Egbe now replaces Samuel Fonkam Azo as president of the Electoral Board of Elections Cameroon Elecam following a presidential decree signed this Tuesday, April 25, by the head of state, President Paul Bia. Plus, Cameroon has today, April 25, joined the international community to commemorate the 10th edition of World Malaria Day with focus on ending malaria for good. Those are my top stories, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening and welcome to join me, Henry Wan, at the Anchor in Douala. Like you heard from our top story, Eno Abrams Egbe is now board chair of Elecam Board. Now he now replaces Samuel Fonka Azo. Eno Abrams' appointment comes one year, four days since his appointment on April 21, 2016, to join the Elecam Board. Let's now revisit the oath taking ceremony of Eno Abrams Egbe of 2016 when he joined the Elecam Board. I, you know, I'm proud of you I swear to fully and faithfully discharge my duty and to exercise my office without fear or peril in accordance with the Constitution and laws of force to ensure the confidentiality of proceedings and votes, to abstain from taking public positions and to declare any consultation on matters falling under the purview of elections and law. They cannot start functioning as members of the electoral board without taking the oath of office. This oath of office has been taken. Of course, I cannot uh, give them any other, uh, any other advice other than that contained in the, in the, in the oath of office. Uh, it is a delicate job that we are doing. It is a job that depends on what people think we are doing rather than even the real things that we are doing because elections are more importantly about perception. So I think that would be the clear message I'll be giving them. Cameroon's Minister of Mines, Industry and Technological Development today launched the 2017 Joint Inspection of Enterprises. NS Ngwabubu reiterated that 2017 results should boast, should boast both the touristic and environmental aspects of Cameroon. Veronica Ajay now reports. Industries in Cameroon must respect both the environment and the population while boosting the economy of the country. To make this a reality, a prime ministerial decree which dates as far back as 2014 set up a joint inspection committee with main objective valorizing the touristic aspect of the nation while respecting all angles. Vous vous souvenez que pendant plusieurs années, les opérateurs se sont plaints de ce que les administrations euh, venaient aux inspections chacune à son tour. Economic operators who had earlier complained of random checks from different government authorities henceforth have no excuses. Launching the 2017 joint inspection exercise here in Douala, Cameroon's Minister of Mines, Industries and Technological Development said the 2016 execution rate of 80% should be overcome this year so that classified enterprises should no longer be a problem to the population and visitors. He adds that contrary to previous years, only those with authorizations will be checked and sanctioned in case of any lapses. In 2016, 3,708 enterprises all around Cameroon were inspected and the sum of 1 billion CF francs was recovered. One day after Louis George Njipendi's appointment as new board chair of the Cameroon Airlines Corporation, Cameco, expectations are high on the changes the corporation may have to undergo in the coming days. Our reporter, Larinette Ndo Apaje, met with an economist in Yaoundé to know if Louis George will be able to turn the tables around for the corporation. Her reports. 
The President of the Republic of Cameroon's appointment of Louis-Georges Kotu Jipendi as the new board chair of the Cameroon Airlines Corporation has not permitted Mefuru Omaru to preserve the seat of the board chair for up to one year after his appointment on the 22nd of August 2016. For the new board chair of Cameco, this April 24, 2017, is just the kickoff point and not a time to analyze stakes. The main concern to, for me today is to express my high gratitude to the head of state for the very high esteem and the very great honor he did to my humble person. Uh, I would not like to reverse too much, too much comments today, hoping that uh, we'll have time to discuss uh, a different time uh, when we are a little bit more involved in the files. Meantime, the Cameroon Airlines Corporation, Cameco, is under the phase of relaunch worth 60 billion francs CFA, of which 30 billion has been reserved so far. The challenge of restoring the long lost glory of Cameco, which dates as far back as 2011, is what Louis Georges Kutu Jipendi who is in his 40s, will have to restore alongside Enes Dikom, who is still the Director General of Cameco. Farmers in the southwest region have been encouraged to put in practice modern agricultural techniques in order to boost the agricultural sector in Cameroon, despite the numerous difficulties on the field. The call was made by Pitma recently during their mid-term evaluation meeting in Boya. From Boya, Ebune Glindis now reports. Bringing together four farmers' cooperatives in the southwest region, this midterm evaluation of the World Bank's agricultural investment and market development project with French acronym PIDMA has as objective to look at ways to better agriculture in the southwest region. According to the representative of Ekiliwindi Farmers Food and Tubers Cooperative, this meeting is very important. It will help us a lot in the sense that we have been educated and advised in this meeting that we should always base on the farm and with the supply of the inputs like cuttings to the farmers we are hoping that in the, by the end of this year we are able to improve in the production of the product that we are working with. during the meeting Collective challenges were observed, like the lack of roads, electricity, and portable water, as personal challenges were not left out. The challenges of financing, where to get the money that is cheap, where to get the money that is uh, adaptable to development of agriculture. That is the challenge that we have. The farmers were encouraged to put into practice what they have learned as solutions and recommendations were made to some problems. Today is April 25 and it is the day that we are celebrating or commemorating as well Malaria Day. Statistics from the National Malaria Control Program reveals that the disease accounts for about 50 to 59, 56 percent of death amongst children under five years. As we celebrate the 10th edition of World Malaria Day today, let's look at the malaria-related figures in this report by Muma Manda. leading cause of death in many developing countries. One of the most severe public health problems worldwide, malaria is an all-time threat to humankind. 3.4 billion, half of the world's population, live in areas at risk of malaria transmission. With over 106 countries and territories, the disease transcends boundaries. Its easiest victims, young children and pregnant women. In the tropics, where the local weather favors the breeding of mosquitoes, the situation is even more critical. Cameroon's example is proof of this fact. In 2014, statistics revealed that out of every 1,000 persons hospitalized in the country, 500 suffer from the disease. As it stands, malaria accounts for 45% of consultations and 54% of hospitalization. Not only a health malaise, malaria is a socio-economic jinx, reason why efforts towards its eradication have been multiplied. Of the success stories recorded, the WHO announced that in the past 13 years, 4.3 million deaths by malaria were averted. Long way to go still. How about using a mosquito net to go further? 
59% of hospitalization during pregnancy are due to malaria and can result in adverse birth outcomes and maternal death. Let's now look at the relation between malaria and pregnant women. Once again, Mumamanda. On every available victim, known fact, if statistics are anything to go by, though, even the disease has its favorites. For specific reasons, pregnant mothers are more vulnerable to attacks. Medics explain. It's a physiologic condition, we say, but we know the, in that condition, the body is meant or it is uh, expected to meet additional demand because it is nursing the growing baby. So that weighs on the, uh, you know, on the uh, lady's system and usually there is a decrease in the immunity. So during pregnancy, there's, in, there's a decrease in immunity and that makes her open to uh, a number of uh, infections, including malaria. Like young children, therefore, pregnant women must pay particular attention to the anti-malaria movement. More than just one life is at stake, a factor they don't forget. With good reason, knowing that up to 200,000 newborn deaths each year are as a result of malaria in pregnancy. Thankfully, there are known and effective methods of managing the disease during this period. If therapy, if we, so which means during pregnancy, we will uh, give to the lady, we will, we will give her a dose of uh, fancy there um, early in pregnancy, and then we'll give another dose later in the pregnancy. Uh, studies have shown that when you do that, you reduce the, her chance of getting malaria or severe forms of malaria during pregnancy. As the world commemorates the International Day for the Fight Against Malaria, a special thought to the bearers of life. Their challenge with the disease is a significant health problem with substantial risks for the pregnant women, her fetus, and the newborn child. This year's edition of When Malaria Day focuses on ending malaria for good with emphasis on prevention. To that effect, our newsroom sought to know how inhabitants of the city of Douala have been using the treated mosquito bed net distributed in the year 2016 in the fight against the disease. Darlene Fejo went finding and now reports. Treated mosquito bed nets protect me and my baby against mosquitoes, which lead to malaria. Unlike this nursing mother who cannot sleep Without her treated mosquito bed nets, many inhabitants of the economic capital used insecticide nets for other purposes not related to the prevention of malaria. The misuse of these treated mosquito bed nets exposes families, especially pregnant women and children below five, to mosquito bites which causes malaria. Some people who are, when, when they, have, they, they receive their treated mosquito bed net, Instead of using it as indicated, that means put it on their bed and sleep under. They use it to catch fish or showing their dress or make some barrier and so on. We'll have this fish. This fish, after then, you will contact, uh, contact malaria and this malaria will kill you. According to health officials, these treated mosquito bed nets, which have a lifespan of three years, are one of the key preventive instruments against the disease. The, the, this mosquito, this uh, treated mosquito net, bed net, is an insecticide. Mm? It will make a barrier and now will kill the mosquito. These nets, expected to reduce about 70% of malaria cases in the country, were distributed in 2016 across the national territory to hold back the disease. Some Douala city dwellers, however, complain of the unbalanced distribution of these treated mosquito bed nets during universal coverages. Let's now talk something else. The National Employment Fund has today, April 25, launched a four-day open door for job seekers to discover job opportunities and have exchanges with employers, despite the effort made by the fund. Why do we still have so many unemployed graduates in Cameroon? Larinet Apade now attempts an answer. Thousands of youths graduate with various degrees and diplomas each year in Cameroon. Competence, capacity and training are what they have in their possession after school, yet 
the equivalence to the needs of the job market has been identified as one of the main justifications of unemployment in the country. Youths have to be trained to respond to the market needs. I take an example of a young girl who has been trained in secretarial duties, but has she passed the real professional test? Maybe yes, maybe no. Can she match the speed of secretarial duties while on duty? These questions must be answered, and our duty is to ensure that job seekers are up to date with today's requirements in the professional world. The unemployment status, even with the academic backing, has forced many youths to express disappointment and frustration. I am on the field day in day out looking for a job even with my educational background. I have reached a point where whatever I see, I accept. However, some employers have taken into consideration the unprofessional aspects of job seekers who have adequate academic experience. Alongside professional programs, employers have been urged to recruit young graduates with ambition and later train them in the course of their work since every job seeker also needs a first working experience and the first opportunity to show proof. Following the summon of the moderator of the Presbyterian Church of Cameroon and some Catholic bishops in the southwest region of the country, Christians have been expressing diverse views about the summon, though adjoined to a yet announced date. Our southwest based correspondent, Ebune Glindis, sampled the opinions of some Christians and now packaged the following reports for us. During this ordination ceremony of eight Reverend Fathers and 13 Deacons of the Catholic Church Moliko Boya, the Bishop of Boya, His Lordship, Emmanuel Bushu, whom alongside other bishops of the Southwest have been summoned to appear at the Court of First Instance, addresses his Christians about the counts against him through this letter. Count one, that we fail to ask parents to send their children back to school or to cause the deposit of school fees paid into an escrow account despite the notice served on us on the 1st of March 2017. Count 7. That we, on the same community of the 9th of February 2017, express our satisfaction on what we claim to be grievances or apprehension as being evident. He says peace can come only from God. True peace comes only from God. We must continue to pray and hope in the assistance, guidance, and protection of the risen Lord who never fails. Christians, on their part, have expressed diverse worries about the summoning of their spiritual leaders. This our country knows the root cause of the problem and they're just cutting around it. It is time they get serious, but as you know, we have we prescribe only one way of solving this problem as Christians. For us, we're going down on our knees and we're praying. Showing the, 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 the bishop to the court, uh, to me, I see like showing God to, to God. As these Christians have been called upon by the Boya bishop to pray, Though postponed, they have, however, agreed to rally behind their leaders with their presence at the court. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Inhabitants of Lokbeso here in Douala are living in a state of uncertainty following the, uh, an ongoing uh, land dispute between two parties. Our reporter John Paul Samam was in Logbeso this earlier around this afternoon and sought to know the root cause of the problem and our reports. Here at the Songpe Israel neighborhood in Logbesu at the Dwala 5 municipality, most families have bought land from Kumba Mukuri Ashil, the projected legal son of late Mukuri Kumba. As Boa Albert says, the land disputes resurrected from the fact that a group of fraudsters using Madame Brigitte Ebude Manga to illegally claim part of the land of the Kumbas family at the detriment of the real family. This 96 hectare of land is owned by the Kumbas family since 1995. In 2004, 
the fake claims arose over this piece of land with Madame Brugette Manga claiming to be related to the deceased Mokori Kumba. The friends of the family who are on the ground are menaced by these individuals. Chivashil Kumba says the real owners of the land were badly treated by the judiciary and the fake claimer of the land who wasn't a member of the family and was not related to anybody. She presented false documents to support her claim. We opened an investigation and discovered that she had made a lot of fake documents. To most of the locals who had constructed houses on a disputed piece of land, the ongoing tussle puts them in the middle of the deep blue sea. This lady says it's been difficult on them because they are not sure of what was going to happen and where they will go to with their children. Que vraiment la, que justice soit faite et que nous entrons en possession de ce qui nous est dû. The Ministry of State Property Survey and Land Tenure in March 2016 issued a ruling in favor of Ashil Kumba, the real representative of the Kumba's family. An investigation has been opened into the matter, and all attempts to get to the opposite party on a visit to the site proved futile. A provisional bureau to manage the mutual fund of the Douala City Council has been installed today. The government delegate to, to the Douala City Council, Dr. Frix Ntonetone, who chaired the ceremony, stressed on the fact that the creation of the fund doesn't spring from the recent strike action by some council workers, as we hear in this report by John Paul Sama. The government delegate to the Douala City Council, Dr. Fritz Tonentone, has insisted that there is no crisis at the council. He was speaking this Tuesday at a ceremony where he presided over the Constitutive General Assembly of the Mutual Fund of the Council. The creation of this mutual fund comes a few weeks after the strike action organized by the Workers' Trade Union in Wuri, which was to highlight the sanitary as well as the health conditions of the workers. The government delegates to the Douala City Council says the creation of this mutual fund is an idea that started in 2015. The authorization for this exercise came from the executive committee to the government delegates to carry out this project to cover social activities of the council. Following the meeting held this Tuesday, a provisional committee has been put in place taxed with the social coverage of the workers. We are going to ensure that we bring together all the stakeholders to explain to them once more the basics of our exercise so that everyone can know their job description firsthand. This provisional committee put in place has a mandate of one year to carry out their mission for the well-being of the workers. Out of Cameroon, there is a big difference between practicing dentistry and finding a way to practice being a dentist. But thanks to the world of virtual reality, dentists in training have a new way of practicing their craft through the relatively new technology of mixed reality. VOA. The patient doesn't complain, but that's really the only difference for these dental students practicing in the world of mixed reality. The mixed part of the process is this dental training head. It's not much to look at, and without the virtual reality goggles, it's even less impressive. But when you place the VR over the fake head, a process called augmented reality, suddenly it's a real mouth and a real person. I hope this technology will give more visual information and help students imagine and understand what needs more caution during practice surgeries by revealing more information on non-visible areas. This is something a textbook can't offer. The developers hope the training program will make dentists more comfortable with patients and let them practice all kinds of different dental scenarios. Usually, we would have to use our imagination to determine the area that needs treatment and then sync that information with what we are physically seeing in our patients, a process that requires experience, intuition, and good sense. 
but the merit behind this technology is that anyone can see the same information and implement treatment safely. The developers say this is the first time virtual reality simulation has been successfully paired with augmented reality. The Merida team says they expect to have a product ready for universities and hospitals in about two years. Kevin Enix, VOA News, Washington. And it is here that we place a cap on today's uh, English primetime newscast on Spectrum Television. Thank you all for your latitude. See you tomorrow. God bless and bye bye. TV, your TV.